I look back at it now and I just think, how did I get through that? Because, you know, no one should have to go through something like that their first time becoming a mum. Terry Mankalo Ngātoro is a world champion. The Gisborne paddler and her team Kaiarahi Tō are the best in New Zealand. And she has won gold medals at the Wakaama World Sprint Champs in Australia and Tahiti. I love the culture of the sport. I love the sense of belonging. And you know, your teammates are like family over the, you know, they grow to be family over the years. Her journey with the sport began at the age of 11 when she was invited to join a friend's team. I ended up being the reserve that year and the team had won medals and I was like, oh, this, this isn't that fun being a reserve. I really want to try hard and make it into the team. And then I think the next year I made it into the team and we ended up winning. And I was like, I actually really love this. In 2021, while studying law and economics at Waikato University, Kerry found out she was pregnant. At the time you're thinking, oh my gosh, this is the end of the world, but it's actually not. Um, and then I, find, I found out I had twins, I was like, oh my goodness, it gets even better. <laughs> so I ended up finishing my second year of uni, well, actually really heavily pregnant. And you know, you go through a lot of changes during your pregnancy, so it wasn't easy at all. Now that the kids are here, I think it's just made me want to just finish my degree and, you know, get on with it. <laughs> The birth of the twins came with some complications. I found out that we were a close contact of a positive COVID case and, well, the initial shock I was, you know, no one had had COVID in Gisborne yet. So it was like, oh my gosh, what does this mean for me? And I was three days out from being induced into labour. So it was quite a scary experience. Kerry gave birth to two beautiful boys, Tafiti and Afiti. I had just given birth and I think it was standard protocol at the hospital to test every day for COVID and they had just tested me and I was positive and I was immediately, oh, because I was already in isolation in the hospital and immediately it went into, this is full isolation, no one is allowed in here unless you're a staff member. They had not prepared the room properly for me because they had never had a case of COVID. I was the first COVID case at Gisborne Maternity Unit. Five times out of six As a world champ in Wakaama, Kerry understands what it means to be first, but in this case, it wasn't worth celebrating. I'm still trying to get over the initial shock of having just given birth, and then I find out I've just got COVID for the first time in my life, because it was obviously fresh and not how it's quite normalized now, being locked in this cold, dark room for five days with newborn babies and no visitors. It was a pretty horrible experience. Once her isolation was over, she was able to go home, but it wasn't the homecoming she'd hoped for. I think day five I could only leave with one twin and I wasn't allowed to visit the other twin in hospital. It was really like heartbreaking leaving the other baby in hospital with just a nurse, you know? no family member there to be with the baby. The joys of having the boys home were short-lived as Kerry kept getting sick. I started to get really like, um, like dark thoughts, you know, the kind of when you go into depression and you're just not wanting to just do anything. And then I was, I was only like looking after the babies and not myself. And I was just feeling so unwell. I had just had a two month long infection and there was just constant symptoms popping up that weren't going away. Her health continued to decline. I had 20 doctor visits before they could just say it's long COVID because they just didn't know what was wrong with me. And I guess that's for a lot of people. I know a lot of people who have long COVID and are just left without answers. So I was like pretty upset with the health system after going so many times. Yeah, but it took me hassling them to actually look at what was wrong with me. 11 months on, Kerry has learned to function with their long COVID diagnosis. There was nothing that was followed up from it. It was just, on my, cl my clinical records it just said long COVID disease and that was it. And there was no further investigation. And so I guess that's just what I have to live with now, is just long COVID, unfortunately. But I, I guess like I look at it and I think, 
you know, there's people out there with much, you know, much more horrific diseases and I actually, I'm lucky I have a, you know, quite a mild version of long COVID. But the toll it took on her was more than just physical. I was starting to get really bad, like, suicidal thoughts. I just wanted to end it, you know. You just don't want to, I guess, keep going through these horrible times. Being sick, becoming a new mother, that would have definitely been the catalyst to my depression because I was just so upset all the time and it's just constant every day hoping to get better and you're not getting better and then I guess for me I just kind of realised I'm, re I'm in a really dark place, I need to get out of here. Kerry sought professional help for her depression but ultimately found relief in what she always loved. I had talked to my midwife about it and she had recommended I go to counselling but it didn't really help me. I think I needed to um, actually help myself. So that's when I started going back into exercise and sport and that's my happy place. Well, pre-babies that was my happy place. So when I started to get out and, you know, out and, out and about when I was a bit better, which was like three, four months postpartum, I could actually go and walk the babies out and that's how I knew I was actually getting out of it. It's been a recovery with plenty of ups and downs, a journey which has ultimately led her back to Waka Ama. But I still, you know, when you're sleep deprived, you're a new mum, you've just had all this bad, you know, all these bad things happen to you, I used to fall back into it and, you know, so it's like a wave, like it's in and out. You're just in and out of just these dark times. But going into my Wakaama season is when I fully came out of it. Like, I think I just had a new motivation to just look after myself better. Um, and that's when I started paddling again. As Kiri began to share her experiences, she found she wasn't alone. So I have a really good like group of friends and well obviously I call them family too and there's I had friends at the time who had been going through the same things as me um, who had just had babies as well and so we would chat about it and you know I started to realize oh this is actually quite normal like a lot of women go through this but I think a lot of women miss out on you know key support that they need well for myself I never really thought actually I need to go in you know um, do something about how I'm feeling until I got to a point where, oh my gosh, I actually have to go and do something. The experience has given Kiri a new outlook on life. The horrible times are what make you a strong person and I'm, I guess like nothing can really bother me anymore. I have a greater appreciation for life and my body, like my health. I actually take care of myself really well now. Kerry is continuing her law degree. Tafiti and Afiti will turn one in March, and she is training for next year's World Wakaama Sprint Champs. Renee Lola here, local focus.